Hi there, welcome to lecture 24 of Fox. And today is an exciting day because we are going to introduce our first very simple computing machine. So it's an example of a model of computing. And so we're really delving into the theory of computing. And this uh, computing machine, this uh, model of computing goes by many names, deterministic finite automata, finite state machines, you know, and for, just for short, we will just call them automata. And the idea, the basic idea is captured by this cartoon from this very famous game, Super Mario Brothers, where you can think of Mario himself as an automaton, as a finite state machine. And Mario eats things, mushrooms, fire things, you know, uh, uh, feathers, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And this sequence of things that Mario eats can be considered as an input sequence. And as Mario eats things, Mario changes states to Fire Mario, you know, Super Mario, Cape Mario, and so on. So Mario is an example of a finite state machine, an automaton. So we're going to be discussing that kind of formally today. It's our first model of computing. So don't get excited. And stay tuned. Okay, quick review of the main ideas from last time. Okay, so the main idea from last time was, you know, how do we define a computing problem? And we said we're going to focus on decision problems. And that, you know, is a, is a definition of a computing problem that has withstood the test of time. It's quite general. It, it, you can solve optimization problems, search problems, and so on and so forth. You can, essentially, by, by posing them as a sequence of decision problems. Okay. But now, once we focus on a decision problem, that decision problem, you know, has you, you, to solve this decision problem, you, you take an input and you must say yes or no. That's what it means to be a decision problem. Decide yes or no something. Okay. And so then there are the inputs for which the answer is yes. We call this the yes set, and that is defined as a language. That's an example of a language. So we introduce the concept of a language, and essentially any set of finite binary strings can be used to define a computing problem. Okay. And then we can ask, how hard is the problem? Okay. And that translates to, how complex is the language? How complex is the yes set associated with the problem? And what does it mean? To be a complex yes set, it means it's not easy to test membership in the yes set. So if we, if we have the yes set corresponding to primes, how easy is it to test membership in this set? Okay, that if it's hard to test membership in this set, then that suggests that you know the problem is complex. Okay. If it's impossible to test membership in the set, that suggests the problem is impossible. Okay. okay, so this allows us to sort of formally define up what is a computing problem as a language, and formally address the issue of how hard is the computing problem by looking at the complexity of the language. Okay. And then, you know, we, we, we said that problems can be harder in sort of two ways. Well, the first way is, you know, I have a computing machine like this Mario, this finite state automaton, this finite state machine that changes states. So I have a simple computing machine, and we don't really know formally what that is yet, okay, but I have a computing machine, and I need to make it bigger and bigger, or faster and faster, in order to solve the problem. Okay. That means I need more resources. That's one kind of harder. I need more resources to solve the problem. And in an algorithms course, you study how to solve problems using a minimum amount of resources, where resources could be memory or runtime and so on and so forth. Okay. But, you know, you know, uh, uh, another way in which a problem can be harder is, you know, you, you gave me a computing machine, and no matter how much resources you give me with this computing machine, I'm not going to be able to solve this problem. That's a different kind of hard. You can't give me more and more resources and, 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 and expect that I should be able to solve the problem. And that kind of hard suggests that, okay, if a problem is that kind of hard, then we need a different kind of machine, a machine with superior capabilities. Okay. And that's the focus. This, this second question is the focus of this course. Is, you know, so we've now, we've now got our first model of computing, this finite state machine, which we're going to describe today. Okay. And we will see that we can solve lots of great problems, and if you give me more resources, I can solve harder and harder problems, but then we will eventually confront a situation where we will find some problems that no matter how many resources you give me, I won't be able to solve the problem. And that leads us to an interesting question. Well, is there a deficiency in this machine? Is there some other superior kind of machine? That's what we're going to say. Okay. And so, uh, the plan for today, we will, we will introduce the finite automaton, the deterministic finite automaton. Deterministic is qualifying the fact that there are other kinds of finite automatons, specifically non-deterministic, kind of random, using randomness. Remember probability? Okay. Um, so non-deterministic has to do with sort of uh, uncertain direct uh, ways in which the computing might occur. Okay. But so we're going to focus on the deterministic version of a finite automaton, and we'll look at what problems we can solve, and then we'll ask the question, can we solve all problems? You know, and if not, you know, is there a, 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 a superior machine that we might be interested in? Okay, so let's go to the board. Let's start with a sort of a, a, a quick review slash practice of, 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 of languages, and in particular regular expressions, because regular expressions are going to be relevant today. 
since languages are so important in the theory of computing, they define computing problems, let's have a quick review, you know, and I'll, we'll have a quick sort of practice session with regular expressions because those are very important in computer science. And then we'll talk about, you know, finite automata, this very simple model of computing that can solve problems, okay, and we'll investigate their capabilities. So, you know, languages, review. So language L is a collection of finite strings. Okay, so collection of finite strings. Okay, and then you might ask strings, what are the characters in these strings? So we typically call that the alphabet. Okay, now we're sort of being a little more formal than we were last time. So we typically call that the alphabet sigma. Okay, in our case, the default alphabet is just zero and one. So binary strings. So these are collections of finite binary strings for the, for the better part of this course. That's all we're going to care about, finite binary strings. Okay, and now let, let me, I'm going to list a bunch of regular expressions. Okay, and you're going to have to figure out what those, you know, what, what that regular expression uh, represents as a collection of strings. And then I'll go in and, and work it out. Okay, so see if you can work it out before me. Okay, so here are a bunch of regular expressions. Okay, so sigma star. So this is the clean star. Okay, what is that? Okay, uh, sigma star. Okay, where sigma is you know, it's an alphabet, so it's a, it's a, it's itself a language, okay, but it's just consisting of my characters zero and one. Okay, what about this guy? The empty string zero concatenated with the empty string one. Okay, what is that? Okay. Um, zero star concatenated with one concatenated with zero star. What is that? So these are all regular expressions. So now this is the clean star. This is illustrating concatenation. This is clean star plus concatenation, okay, where this is the string one. Okay. Sigma star concatenated with one, concatenated with sigma star. What is that? So clean star and concatenation. Okay. Most of the time when we when we talk about regular expressions, we most of the operations that are used are the clean star concatenation. We sometimes use union, okay, but most of the operations are clean star and concatenation. Um, what about this guy? Uh, zero star concatenated with zero one concatenated with one star. What is that guy? Okay. And then here's an interesting guy. Sigma concatenated with sigma. Okay. Now take the clean star of that. Okay. What is this language? These are all regular expressions. We'll come and work them out. And then sigma concatenated with itself three times. So sigma cubed. This we could call sigma squared. So sigma cubed now you take the clean star of that. What is this language? Okay, so lots of languages here. Okay, so I'll give you guys a few seconds, pause the video, and try to figure out in sort of English, okay, what these, these regular expressions represent as a set of strings. So I'll pause one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now let's, let's solve this problem. Okay, all these problems. Okay, so sigma star. Okay, this is the collection of strings that are formed by any number of concatenations of zero one. So you can start with the empty string, zero concatenations. Then, you know, just take each of the characters, zero, one. Then concatenate, you know, take take two characters from here and concatenate. So then you get either zero, zero, if both of them are zero, you get zero, one, one, zero, one, one. And then three characters, zero, 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 and so on. You will soon convince yourself that sigma, the alphabet star, is basically all the finite strings that uh, can be formed using those characters. So this is all all finite binary strings. Okay, I hope you got that. If you did, fantastic. Okay, this is uh, the concatenation of two finite languages. So that you can just, you have to just, you, you know, explicitly solve it. So epsilon concatenated with epsilon is epsilon. Zero epsilon is zero. Epsilon one is one. And then zero one is zero one. So you, you take a string from here, you know, concatenate it, followed by a string from here, and those are all the strings you can get. Okay, what is this guy? Well, let's look at it. So zero star is any number of zeros, including zero zeros, followed by a one, followed by any number of zeros. Okay, that's what zero star means. Okay, well, that's just any string which has exactly one one. Strings with exactly one one. Okay, hope you got that. Okay, now let's look at this guy. It's very similar to this. Okay, but this is sigma star. Now we know that sigma star is any string, any finite string, followed by one, followed by any finite string. 
So these are all the strings with at least one one, because sigma star could be empty, could be empty. So these are all strings with at least one one. Strings with at least one one. Okay, let's look at this guy. Well, you know, some number of zeros, possibly zero zeros. So some number of zeros followed by zero one, followed by some number of ones. Okay, but this zero here, when you concatenate it with zero star, makes it, you know, a non-empty string of zeros. And this makes this, this one followed by one star, makes it a non-empty string of ones. Okay, so this guy here is a string of zeros, cannot be empty. This guy here is a string of ones. So what we have here is a string, strings with, you know, zeros followed by ones. And in both cases, you can't, you cannot have zero zeros and you cannot have one zero. So I, I to be technically, te technically correct, strings with at least one zero, followed by strings with at least one one, and then only once. Okay, this is interesting. Sigma sigma. So sigma sigma. Okay, this is sigma. So sigma sigma is all binary strings of length two. Okay. Now you take star. So you're concatenating all binary strings of length, you're con all concatenations of the binary strings of length two. Okay, it, it could be empty, okay, but after after the empty string, you're concatenating strings of length two. So you have to get an even string, and in fact, you get all the even strings. Strings of even length, including zero, length zero. So this is very similar. Here, Sigma cubed. So what is sigma squared? Sigma squared is just zero 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 one one zero one one. And now you take the star of this, you get the even string. Sigma cubed is exactly all the binary strings of length three, and you you take all possible concatenations of those, you get strings of length equal to multiple of three. Okay. And so there. And if you've got all of these, fantastic. Boy, you are an expert in regular expressions. Okay. Um, and if you didn't, then, you know, sit, sit back and sort of think about these and, and just revel in the beauty and the power of regular expressions. So regular expressions, so these are very compact expressions that represent sort of non-trivial sets of strings. Okay. So now let's introduce... Uh, so that's a quick review of languages and regular expressions. Why did I focus on regular expressions? Because regular expressions are going to be relevant to what we're discussing today, which is finite automata. Deterministic finite automata, we'll just say automatons or automata. Okay, so let's erase, talk about automata.